Hey everyone, Shadows here. Today I'm showing you how to port Fortnite skins from the game files over to Blender in literally seconds. Now before we start to use the program in today's video, you're going to need to have at least Java 11 installed on your computer. The way to check your Java version is go to your control panel, programs, programs and features, search Java up in the search bar, and you'll see your Java and then the version right here. I've got version 11.0.9 so I can run the program, but if you haven't, if you've got a lower version, go to the link in the description below and download Java 11.0.9, download this here and then run this .exe to install it. Now once you've installed Java, go to this GitHub link in the description below and here you'll find the Fortnite Auto Exporter by Half. Big shout out to Half for making this tool, go support his Twitter in the description below. When you get to this page, find the latest version, which for me is version 0.4.0 and then click on this .zip file right here to download it. Once you've downloaded it, just drag it to your desktop or somewhere easy to access, double click to open it up and you'll find these files inside. We're going to create a new folder, we're just going to call it export or something like that and then open up this folder and then drag all of this stuff from the Fortnite Auto Exporter inside of it, like so. Once you've done this, you can close the Fortnite Auto Exporter folder and you can also delete that zip file from your desktop. Now, once you've got your exporter folder open, open up this config.json file and inside at the top, you'll see the packs directory. You'll need to find your packs directory on your computer. This is where Fortnite is installed. So on my computer, it's in Windows C, Program Files, Epic Games, Fortnite, Fortnite Game Content and Packs. This is where the default Fortnite will be installed, but if you chose to install it somewhere else on a separate drive, you'll need to find this packs folder yourself. Once you've found it, just go and click up here and then copy this path and go back over to the config and paste it up here. In between each path, you're going to have to add an extra backslash so that each of them are double backslashes. And then once you've done this, you'll be done with your packs directory. We're also going to need to change this encryption key. Right now we're on version 15.20, which has this encryption key that every time there's a new Fortnite update, there's a new encryption key. So the way we're going to get our newest encryption keys, go to the Discord link in the description below and join my Discord server. Once you've joined, you go to the rules channel and you have to click a thumbs up here just to verify that you're a real person. Then once you're in the server, scroll down to the AES key channel and here you'll find the latest update AES key. So for us, it's 15.20 and this AES key is 0 0.6, 0 times 6, 4, I can't count, 0 times 3, 6, that's already in here. So we don't need to change the encryption key. But if there is a new update and it changes, you're going to need to go into the Discord, paste it into here. Once you've finished the config, you can just save and you can close the config. And now you can go back to your folder and we're going to have to double click to run the exporter. Before we run the exporter, we're going to go to one final link in the description below. We're going to go to guild.org to download Umodel. Click download when you get to the page and download the Win32 version here. Once you download a Umodel, it will come in a zip file like this, umodel underscore win32.zip. Double click to open it up and here you'll find the sdl2.dll and umodel.exe. We're going to open up the exporter folder and we're going to drag both of these files inside of there and now we'll be ready to run the exporter. To run the exporter, double click this .bat file here. Once you open it up for the first time, there'll be a new folder created called mappings, but you can leave that. Inside the command prompt, you can choose from character, backpack, pickaxe, glider, or weapon to export. I'm going to choose character today, but feel free to type one of those in instead. And then here you can choose from battle royale and save the world. Today I'm exporting skin from battle royale, but you can choose save the world if you'd like to. And then here you have to enter your skin names. I'm going to be exporting Snowbell. And then once you've put in your skin name, you can click enter. A bunch of text will pop up. This will be entering new model. The exporter will be entering and exporting everything you need. This step normally takes about five to 10 seconds as seen in the title, porting in seconds. And you'll be able to tell when you're done when this working directory pops up with this uh, little path right here. And then it prompts you to choose another character, backpack, pickaxe, etc. With the working directory, select everything inside these parentheses and just copy it and we'll use it in a second. We're gonna open up Blender either by just opening up a random Blender project or open up this shader.blend inside this folder. Once you're inside of Blender, either create a new scripting tab, uh, add up here, general scripting, or just go to your scripting tab already and click open. And we're gonna find our exporter folder and we're gonna open up the autoexporter.py. Up here at the top working directory, we're gonna paste in the thing we just copied like so, and you're gonna add double backslashes if you don't have them already. Once you've added them, you can mess with a few settings. You can reorient bones, which I actually prefer. I'll show on screen right now the difference between reoriented bones, what they look like, what they don't look like if you don't use them. I'm going to change it to false because I prefer non-reoriented, but it's all up to you. And you can also turn off the textures for the character if you really want to. Once you're finished, just click Alt-P and it will run the exporter and the skin will be right here inside of Blender. Now, as you can see, when we go into viewport shading mode, we've got the skin fully textured and fully ported here inside of Blender in literally seconds. However, there's a few things we need to fix. As you can see, there's a bit of overlapping hair and also the bones don't move very well. So we're going to have to fix that. If we go to the hair up here, sometimes there's hair connected to the head and there's also hair connected to the hat as well. So we're going to fix this. We're going to select the hair that we don't want. So make sure that's outlined. Click tab while it's selected 
and hover over one of these dots and click L. Also do the same on any other hair. So there's hair strands at the front. We're gonna select L on these as well. And then once you've selected everything and everything's highlighted, click X and then click delete vertices. Now we've deleted the hair, the skin's looking more normal. We just gotta fix the bones up because as you can see, when we try and like bend her back back, for example, it just doesn't move. The whole body and the head doesn't move very well together. To do this, we're gonna select the face accessory bones. As you can see up here, there's three bones. So these are the face accessory bones. You can tell if you click G and try and move around or move the face accessory, the hair. You can also control click on the head after that. So it moves the head and also control click on the body so that all three of them selected and the whole skin moves. And then while you're hovering over your character, click control J. If you try and click control J while you're hovering over these, nothing happens. Make sure you're hovering over the viewport over here, this display, so control J. Now there's one set of bones up in the corner up here and it moves the whole character. Now we need to go inside pose mode. So just click this little drop down arrow and click pose. And here we're gonna have to check uh, and delete these duplicate bones. So as you can see, there's a, lot, there's a lot of bones and we don't need them all. So go to the neck over here. This is the easiest place to do this. Go to the neck about this bone, neck 02. Click tab to go into edit mode. You see a bunch of lines. It's not as confusing as it looks. Go to the neck, double click on the neck. So it goes up dot, dot, dot 01. So in this top left corner, there'll be dot 001. Click shift G and suffix and then delete bones. If you didn't get that, go to the neck, double click and keep on clicking until it gets dot 001. Shift G, suffix and then delete bones. Do the same, double click on the neck again if you've got two, uh, two sets of bones. Shift G, suffix and delete bones. That's only with dot 001 and dot 002. So now when you click on the neck, if you keep on clicking, it should just be neck underscore 02 because those 001 and 002 were duplicate bones that we didn't need. Now when we try and move the body, there's still a few issues. Nothing's connected. So we're gonna go and select the head and we're gonna go to this little wrench icon down here, click the drop down here and then in object, it should be empty and this should be red up here. That means it's wrong. We need to go to the object and we need to click this drop down here and we need to select the dot AO, that which is the armature. So if you click that and now we try and move, the head should move with it. There's a few issues which we'll fix in a second. Same with the hat as well, the hat doesn't move and this is red, go down here and then tick uh, this dot AO here. And now when we try and move, the, we move uh, everything sort of moves, but not really, which I'll explain in a second. Now we're gonna have to fix the face. As you can see, the face sort of just deforms when it tries to move. So go back into pose mode and then click tab to go into edit mode while you're in pose mode. And there'll be three bones at the back of the head. There'll be the face attach, the, the jaw and the head. Select the bottom one and then shift click on the top one. That'll be the face attached bone and the head bone. And then click control P and then click keep offset. This means that now whenever you move the face, it doesn't deform, which is good. Another thing with the eyes, when you try and move the eyes, it will do this and that really doesn't look great, especially when you're trying to like look somewhere. It just it really doesn't work. So the way to fix this is just go into tab, uh, click tab while you're in pose mode to go into edit mode. And these eyelids over here, go uh, select them and then go to this little bone tab down here, relations, and then just change this, un uh, this eye here, type in head or face attached is more better. Uh, more better, Jesus. Face attach. Do this for all of the eyelids. So this is another one of the eyelids. Face attach. Do the same for this eyelid up here. Face attach. And then this uh, bottom one as well. Face attach. Once you've done this, when you try and move the eyes, they will move normally now and you can move the eyeball on its own. The last issue we'll have to fix is any leftover bones like these. They don't move with the head. You're going to have to parent these uh, individually. You have to parent these yourself. So go to tab in edit mode and find a bone that doesn't move with the body. So for example, this bone up here, these hair bones don't move. As you can see, if we go into tab into edit mode and go down to the relations in this bone tab, the parent, there is no parent. There's nothing in here. But this needs to change. We're gonna to to type in head. And now when we go back into uh, pose mode, that bone that we just uh, parented moves with the body now. There's a few more bones that we need to change. Uh, this one up here, I'm pretty sure. This one hasn't got a parent. You just gotta do this manually and then change this to head like so. There's also this bone up here. This bone is actually parented to this bone. So all we need to do is just do it to this bone. It sounds quite confusing, but all you gotta do is just parent the parentless bones to the head, like so. We can do the same back here. As you can see, this bone back here, this is the uh, the parent pony. We're gonna have to change this. Since there's nothing in here, we're gonna change it to head. And now this bone will move with the head. So if we try and move the spine, this will move the head now. And that's pretty much it. There's a few leftover bones from the hair that we deleted earlier, but we don't need to parent those because they're not actually being moved. And now we've got a fully parented Fortnite skin, fully working. In literally seconds, it took to import and a few minutes to bring up the bones. But you get what I mean, the clickbait, leave me alone. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy and it helped you, feel free to drop a like and make sure to subscribe to videos like this. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. See you guys soon.